Welcome, welcome to another class. It's so good to have you here with us again. I am always happy to see you, especially when I see you coming on early. That brings my heart a lot of joy. So, today's class, I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be an enjoyable one. Did you? Yep. And I think one of my favorite ones because it is going to be a reflection of God's love, which is my favorite topic. So I want to be able to show you how much God loves you and how we can see it everywhere around us in nature. And God's love is a huge part of our healing and a part of medical missionary work. And one of the primary factors and remedies um, that we need. So that's why I'm excited about this topic today. And the first thing we're going to do is, Samantha, you, you're going to come up with me. I will introduce you. Well, let's, we, we'll start with prayer, and then we'll go over some announcements. So my name is Amy, and this is my daughter. Samantha. How old are you? Can they hear me? Yeah. Oh, by the way, let's do sound check. Can you all hear us? Can you see us? Can you hear us? Yes. Yes, yay. Praise the Lord. Yes. Wonderful. That is so nice. Thank you. Oh, and I'm going to put my glasses on. Then I can see you better. All right. Here we go. Yes. Oh, so much better. Okay, so let's start with a word of prayer. Our most precious Heavenly Father, I thank you very much for bringing us yet to another class. Um, I know that um, the past week, since the last class, there have been many different things going on in our lives. And I know that you have been there every day to show us that you love us. And I pray you will help us to look for it in each day. Even when we're, when we're going through the trials is when we need it the most. And so we need your Holy Spirit now to bless this class and help me and Samantha as we both teach and be with this, these precious students and all the students who are going to watch in, in the future. I pray you will touch their hearts and that the most important thing they can gather from this class is a greater knowledge of your love because when we are filled with it when we're filled with the knowledge filled with the fullness of it then we have Jesus and then we can have so much joy and peace and we can share it with others so they can have it too we thank you in Jesus name amen amen okay so just to go over some announcements so we're today as you already heard in the prayer we're going to be your teachers and so when the teacher is teaching, if you can stay muted until we ask you a question, and you can also make comments, and um, you don't necessarily need to raise the hand. You could just unmute yourself and and uh, and give the answer or make a comment. We love to hear your comments and we love to hear your answers. So please feel free um, to 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 talk with us and communicate with us. I think that's one of the most enjoyable parts of this program. Uh, just so you know, especially for the parents, this will be, this is recorded and it'll be uploaded later on my YouTube channel. But the children, n not, not, none of the children will be seen, none of the, the Zoom um, screen will be seen on YouTube. The only thing that will be seen on, on YouTube is what's going on up here and the children's voices will be heard, and that's it. Barely. So, eh, Samantha says barely, but you, you can hear them. And that's nice for children who will watch in the future so they can hear you. That's a good witness to them and makes it more enjoyable for them. Um, and so, and, I, and later I'll have Samantha to share the email address on the chat because if you want to sign up, just send an email. So, because every week I send the time and date and subject of the new class. And we will have a class next week. Again, I'm just not sure when. Uh, I, I'm sorry that I don't have it s 
scheduled consecutively week after week, it's, it's not easy. Uh, we're working with the different teachers who are um, parents and they have full-time jobs and they're busy. So, but I'm so thankful that the Lord has been, been providing teachers all along the way. And we still have some more classes scheduled in the future. The goal is to hopefully go over all of the different systems by God's grace. So pray for that, that we can actually do that. And um, yes, yeah, and if you have any questions, you can ask at the end. If you, you know, if, if it's up an appropriate time, like when you give an answer or a comment and you have a question, you can throw it in there, but um, you can also ask questions at the end, okay? And so, I don't have review questions from the last class just because I didn't have a chance to write them down since I was the one teaching. I needed to prepare for this class. But if you have any testimonies, remember I've been sharing with you, for those who are new, if, if any of you have testimonies of using the natural remedies that you've been learning, either on yourselves, on family members, or anybody, uh, or sharing the information that you've been learning with others, we love to hear it. So if you have even if you have testimonies of using these natural remedies in the past, aside from these, what you've been learning in these classes, you can share those testimonies as well. Um, so if you have any testimonies, you can share now. And if not, if you think of any, you can share them at the end if something comes to you while we are teaching. So does anyone have any testimonies of what we've been going over in the past? If not, it's okay. So you, if you want, you can share at the end. All right, so one of my favorite parts too is to hear where you're from. So what state or country? We've been having children from all over the world. We've, we've had Brazil and Ethiopia, Canada, several countries in Africa and several countries in the Caribbean. And we've had Philippines, so if there's, and of course, many different states in America. So if you can tell us, if you don't mind, and the ones who, who have already been telling us, you don't need to tell us again. But those who are new, if you want to share with us where you are um, tuning in from. I'm from Massachusetts. Massachusetts Colorado. and Colorado. Praise the Lord. That's wonderful. We love it. We love it. We love to hear. We're actually here in sunny Alabama, in southern Alabama. We're in Seal. So it's very hot. <laughs> We're thankful for AC, right? Okay. Well, let's do our theme song. Let's sing our theme song. And that's um, the other thing to remember is when we're singing together, you unfortunately need to keep yourselves muted. I don't like that because I would love to hear you singing, but it makes it difficult, um, I guess, for everybody else when they're listening. There's an echo. So um, we're, when, we, when we sing, you can uh, sing there in your home among each other. Okay, so let's do the theme song, and it's a merry heart. All right. You want to start? A merry heart Do is good like a medicine Like a medicine Is a merry heart But a broken spirit Dryeth the bones A merry heart Do is good do like a medicine. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope you were singing if you knew it. And if you didn't, I hope it's something that you'll learn. Scripture songs are so wonderful. Okay, well, we are going to get started in the first one. So you can see it's the title of today's topic is Finding God's Love in Nature. So I'm going to let my, my daughter do this first part. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is, it's going to be finding God's love in nature. So it's going to be food and body parts. So
So this is a carrot. It's a carrot. So what can you think of a body part that looks like a carrot, or like the carrots in the picture? And this is this is the time for you to tell us your answers. Your eyes. Exactly. Good. The eye. Carrots in the eyes. Carrots are filled with vitamins and antioxidants like beta carotene that decrease the chance of ma ma macular de de degeneration, the leading cause of vision loss in older people. I know. How about this one? What do you think this it's a walnut? What do you think it body part? Your brain. Your brain. Exactly. The Good. brain. Walnuts in the brain. Walnuts are nicknamed brain food. They have a very high content of omega-3 fatty acids, which help support brain function. What is this? Oops, what did I just do? Yeah. I know, it just... Oh, sorry, hang on, just a sec. Oh, there we, there go. we go. Okay, never mind, I got, um, it came out again. Back. Okay, so what is this? What is the food on the screen? Celery. Good. Exactly. So celery and the bones. Okay. Celery and the bones. Celery is a great source of silicon, which is part of the molecular structure that gives bones their strength. Another funny bone coincidence. Bones are 23% sodium and so is celery. So you want them to what is this? Tomato. Tomato. Exactly. Now, what do you think the tomato looks like? What body part? Sorry, we didn't quite catch that. What body? The heart. The heart. Exactly. Good. The heart. You can see it looks like the So it looks a bit like the two chambers of the heart. Tomato and the heart. Slice open a tomato and you'll notice the red veggie has multiple chambers that resemble the structure of a heart. Studies have found that because of the lycopene in tomatoes, there is a reduced risk of heart disease in men and women who eat them. Now, what do you think this um, vegetable is? Is it a vegetable? Root. Root, yeah. What, what's this root? Ginger. Ginger. So ginger in the stomach. Gingerol, which is the ingredient responsible for ginger's pungent scent and taste, is listed in the USDA database of phytochem phytochemicals? phytochemicals as having the ability to prevent nausea and vomiting. Now what is this? Sweet potato. Sweet potato. Sweet potato. And, and what is the sweet potato look like in the body? What do you think? Can you, you can give a guess. What body part do you think it looks like? Which organ? Pancreas. Liver. I heard it's of pancreas. And I, liver is close, but pan, that's right. Go ahead. Exactly. The pancreas. Good. Sweet potatoes and the pancreas. The oblong sweet potato bears a strong resemblance to the pa pancreas and also promotes healthy function in the organ. Among other jobs, the gland organ called the pancreas helps break down the food from your stomach and produces the hormone called insulin to help regulate your body's glucose and sugar levels. This is where the sweet potato comes in. Other than being a great source of vitamins A and C, sweet potatoes also help diabetics with the balance of their glycemic index, which is directly connected to the functioning of the pancreas. Now, what do you think this is? Beans. Beans. Which, beans. Which what what one? kind of beans? Yeah. Kidney beans. Good. Right. And what body part does it look like? Kidneys. The kidneys. Good. Exactly. There's the kidneys in the body. Kidney beans and the kidneys. Being rich in protein, fiber, and slow-release carbs, kidney beans are very effective at maintaining healthy levels of blood sugar. Are you supposed to do with that one? So ask them what it is. So what banana. is this? Banana, exactly. What? So the bananas look like a smile. It's bananas and smiles. Bananas have an extra special protein called tri 
tryptophan, tryptophan? Mm -hmm. tryptophan, which is actually converted into serotonin once it is digested in the body. Serotonin is that well-loved, happy chemical that can boost your mood and make you feel happier. Not only do bananas look like a smile, but they make you smile, too. What is this? Grapes. 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 And what do you think the grapes look like in the body? This one's a bit harder. We avioli. Good. Exactly. The avioli. Grapes and avioli. If you struggle with allergy-triggered asthma, grapes and their seeds are your new best friend. The seeds contain a chemical called prothacian... Proanthocyanidin. Proanthocyanidin. Proanthocyanidin, which helps reduce your asthma. Grapes also happen to look like the alveoli in your lungs. What is this? Onions. Onions. And what do you think the onions look like? It's just somebody's connection is there. What do you think onions look like in your body? Something circular in your body. Circular and flat. Flattish. Okay, so it is the kid, the, sorry, the, the cells, cells, the blood cells. Red blood, cell. red blood cells. Onions and cells. Onions look a lot like the cells in your body and for good reason. Onions can clear any waste related materials from your cells. And those tears that drive you insane, they're actually cleaning out your eyes. Consider onions a natural cleaning product of your body. Now, what is this? Broccoli. 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 And what does the broccoli look no, like? It's gonna. It's not. Yeah. It's, it'll be something in your body that's actually bad. Mm -hmm. That we don't want. And it's related to what we just um, talked about with to, with the onions. What can be in your body? Bacteria. That's, huh? Bacteria. It can be bacteria. Yeah. But it's a cell, but it's a bad cell. What's a cancer bad cell? cell? Yes, right. Good. The cancer cell. Broccoli and cancer. It has been found that if you eat broccoli once a week, it has the possibility of reducing your chances of prostate cancer by 45%. Now, what is this? Ginseng. Ginseng, Whoa. exactly. Wow. What? And what does the ginseng look like? What do you think? Think? Of the whole the ginseng piece. Wait, just let them just let them guess and then tell them. The whole body. The body, exactly. Good. Ginseng in the human body. Ginseng root can help reduce inflammation, diseases, and even cancer. It also helps you stay alert and have a sharper mind. Ginseng root is compared to the shape of a human body because it helps your entire body from head to toe. Now I'm sure everybody knows what is this. <laughs> Too obvious to say it, right? <laughs> strawberries. Strawberries. And what do strawberries look like? What do you think the strawberries look like? This is something interesting. You can see it right now as I speak. <laughs> I just showed them to you. <laughs> Your tongue. Uh, not quite. <laughs> okay, it's the teeth. Teeth, good. The teeth. Strawberries and teeth. If you regularly eat strawberries, they can help whiten your teeth. Strawberries contain something called malic acid, which helps whiten the enamel on, in your, on your teeth. Good. So. That was the end. So, thank you, Samantha. You're welcome. So, that was a way that I wanted to show you. God's love in nature. Isn't it wonderful how he made all those foods so that when we eat them, they're so good for us. And he even made them look like the different body parts. So then we could remember, oh, the walnut is good for the brain or the tomato is good for the heart. He's so wonderful to do that for us, right? And how many of you ate any of those foods today for lunch or breakfast?
Did anybody eat any of the food Me. that we just... Yeah, what did you eat? Strawberries. Oh, yummy. So you were essentially brushing your teeth, yeah? <laughs> but don't use that as a substitute to brush your teeth. Yeah, we still need to brush our teeth. What, how about anybody else? Anybody else eat any of the foods that we looked at? Strawberry. Good, you had strawberries. Anyone else? Tomatoes. Tomatoes and strawberries? Potatoes. Tomatoes and strawberries? Good. Wow, strawberries are popular. That's wonderful. So now when you eat your food, you can think about God's love and how much He especially loves you because He made those foods for you to make your body healthy and to make you happy, to enjoy them. And when we're healthy, then we're happy. And then we can make other people happy, right? It's a wonderful deal. That's for sure. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at are wild medicinal herbs, which you can see I have some specimens here on my table that we... Are they able to see that? I can't... Are you able to see that, honey? Yeah, you can see that. And so we foraged for this along the side of the road and on the farm we live on and by the house where we live. And so we're going to just go over some of them because these are some of my favorites. They're some of the most common ones. And I'll show you some practical demonstrations. Has anybody foraged for any wild medicinal herbs? Um, when I say forage, I mean, have you gone hunting for them or have you gone on a nature walk and you've seen them in, in the wild? Any kind of herbs that are in the wild, in nature, that are good for healing in the body? Have you hunted or seen them on your walks? Mint. 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 Good. Yes, I have mint growing in the pot at home. I thought to bring it. Anybody else? Plantain. 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 Good. Yes, plantain. What is plantain good for? For bites. For bites. Good. And wounds. Yes. Anybody else? Dandelion. Dandelion. Yes. What is dandelion good for? COVID. Yeah, I like that. Yes, it is. It, it, it does. It shows. And it's good for detoxifying as well. Uh, anyone else? Okay, well, let's go over some of the ones that I have here. First, we're going to look at a golden rule when you're foraging or looking for different wild herbs. When foraging, as always, the golden rule is to first be completely sure that what you are picking is edible, meaning that you can eat it and it's not going to hurt you, it's not going to poison you, because some things can be very dangerous um, and it can make us very sick or some things could even cause us to die, because there are several non-edible look-alikes. Be sure to check out ID guides and foraging videos if you intend to collect your own. You should also only forage from familiar areas. Although you can find, and this is, I was looking up lamb's quarters. Just because you said butterfly tree frogs, I'm thinking that they put down stuff. Butterfly tree frogs, I'm thinking that they put down stuff. Okay. You, okay. Let me finish this and then I'll attend to that. Thank you. So basically, um, yeah, lamb's quarters you can find anywhere. I'm going to go over lamb's quarters. Basically what I have you can pretty much find in um, many different places. You want to limit your gathering to places where you're certain it isn't sprayed with herbicides or exposed to road salt or, and other chemicals. Okay, so some of you said Hosanna said... Um, Yes, so someone said the butterfly pea flower, which I haven't heard of that. Does anybody want to share what that's good for? Butterfly pea flower? 
It is anti-inflammatory. Wonderful. That's so good to know. It would be nice to see what it looks like. We'll have to do homework and look it up. Blue vervain. I know I've heard of that, but I don't remember what it's good for. What about that? What is it's good for your lungs. Blue vervain is good for your lungs. Very good. It's a lot of fun. And Mullen, we have that here. I'm going to show it to you. Thank you for sharing. So here on the picture, you can see what I was talking about. A picture of lamb's quarters. I took that picture on the farm we live on. And that's the lamb's quarters there in the big pot. And we have someone who's growing it specifically for the seeds. You can see on the right side, I took a picture of the seeds. So here it is, right here. See these nice little leaves? And the seeds are right here because this person wants to save a lot of seeds so that we can grow more lamb's quarters because it's very good to eat. Has anybody eaten lamb's quarters? No? That's okay. You know what it tastes a lot like? Spinach. So I like it. It's a very nice green, very pleasant. Here's another better picture that I got from the internet, the lamb's quarters. So has anybody seen it in the wild? Yeah? All right. So now, hopefully, if you see it, you'll recognize it. And here are the seeds. Now, lamb's quarters are high in fiber, protein, and loaded with both vitamins A and C. Lamb's quarters is also high in manganese, calcium, copper, and has a bit of iron, and is high in both omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. Does anybody know what omega-3 and omega-6 is good for, are good for? Do you recognize what that is good for? It's something that has to do with the walnut. It's an organ that has to do with the walnut. Brain function? Yes! So the walnuts are high in omega-3. So are lamb's quarters. The plant's high-protein seeds can be used to make flour and bread. Isn't that neat? I didn't know that. So it creates a lot of seeds and you can make flour and bread. Just one plant can produce between 75,000 and 100,000 seeds. That's a lot of seeds. So here is a chart, and you can see there's different wild herbs. You see dandelion, sorrel, lamb's quarters, stinging nettle, purslane, and then you see some other more common ones that you might be familiar with that we would eat, romaine lettuce, spinach, Swiss chard, kale. Now, on this side you see the protein content on the left side and you see that it's per, uh, gram per 100 gram of fresh weight. And the 100 grams is equal to a half cup of the herb. So a half cup of lamb's quarters has over four grams. Now I was surprised to see that stinging nettle has over six grams of protein. But still, lamb's quarters is also very high. And the amount of protein we need, depending on our weight, is 50 to 100 grams. We don't need that much protein. So you can see that um, we can get a good amount of, from just a half a cup. And when you, that's, of course, fresh. When you cook it, you would, get, you would be able to eat more. And you can see, oh, this is on the, on the right side is the recommended daily intake. And for a stinging let nettle, it's more than 12%. And lamb's quarters is more than 8%. So that's a good amount. And just those wonderful herbs that God has given us. Now, as far as the vitamin C content, lamb's quarters is very high. Much higher. Even stinging let nettle barely has any. Dandelion and sorrel are also very high. How many of you have had sorrel tea? It's sour. Has anybody had sorrel tea? This is my lovely husband. 
Oh, they did. Yeah. You've had sorrel tea? Yeah. Okay, so now you can yeah. and yeah. put everyone on the screen. Okay. If you don't need it, just move it away. Okay. Good, you've had sorrel tea. Do you like sorrel tea? Did you like it when you tried it? Yes. Good, I'm glad you liked it. Okay, look at this. Look how much kale has. Oh, we should definitely eat our kale, right? How many of you like kale or, kale or have eaten kale? Do you like kale? Or yeah? Yes. 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 Good. You know, I didn't like kale before. The Lord had to change my heart for me to be willing to eat the dark green leafy vegetables because I did not grow up on it. So, but now... He likes it in burgers. What's that? He likes it in burgers. Yeah? That's wonderful. He likes it in, in, in burgers. And you like it in burgers. Nice. Wow, that's a good idea. How many of you have had kale chips? I love kale chips. That's my favorite way to eat it. Mm, it's so yummy. But look at this. The recommended daily value of vitamin C. Yes. You've had kale chips? Good. And the recommended daily value, the lamb's quarter, is... 80% is, um, sorry, 133% and kale is 200%. So these are things that are really good to eat. Now, lamb's quarters is also called white goosefoot. The plants can get quite large, as tall as seven feet, and you can see the, pi you saw the picture in the pot, it's really tall. And generally have a deep green, have deep green leaves shaped supposedly like a goose's foot. So let's see. Would you say, I guess that could look like a goose's foot. <laughs> it's a little bit curled up. I just plucked it today, so it needs to be in some water. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> younger leaves have a white powdery substance on the underside. Look for younger, smaller leaves if you want to eat the plant raw, as older leaves can get a bit tough. Let's see if we see this white powdery substance. I'm not seeing it right now, but it doesn't mean that it does not exist. I'm just not seeing it. <laughs> so you want to give the leaves a good rinse before eating to get rid of the normal white powdery bloom on them. If cooking, the, ve the, veggies, the vegetable fares better when it is quickly sautéed or steamed. Its delicate leaves tend to disintegrate if cooked for a long mm. period of time. Like spinach and other greens, lamb's quarters contain oxalic, oxalic acid, which can be both a stomach irritant and can impede the absorption of calcium. So cooking eliminates most oxalic acid, but go easy if you choose to eat them raw. Now the next one is, who can read that on the screen? Comfrey. Yes. Has anyone used comfrey? Yes. Yes, what did you use it for? Yes. Can you share what you used it for? For the bones on my back. Good, yes. Did it help you? Yes. Wonderful. Does anyone else want to share? Share with if they used it and what they used it for. Boo -boo. Say it again. Boo boos. Boo boos. Yes, very good. Anyone else? All right, very good. That's those are all the right things to use it for. And I, you can see, I have several leaves here, and I was able to pluck these from the plant on the farm where we live, we have a whole row of comfrey right up against the greenhouse. These are really large leaves. Now, I did pluck them without gloves and I got poked somewhat, so it is nice to have gloves when you 
pluck them off because it's kind of sharp um, and it's really rough. But this is an amazing, amazing plant. I, God loves us so much to give us these plants because He knew how much we would need them. He knew we would have boo-boos. He knew we would have pain in our bones and in our muscles. So that's why He gave us. It says that He gave us the trees for the healing of the nations, which is us. Isn't it wonderful? I'm just so thankful to the Lord. So here is a very beautiful, luscious, healthy looking green comfrey plant. And here are the comfrey flowers. Aren't they pretty? They're purple. And here are the ones that where I plucked the plant that's on our farm. It's very, very hot right now. So um, they don't look as green and luscious, but they're still very effective. And we're still very thankful for them. So comfrey or knit bone, because someone said it's for the, the bones in the, in the back. This is another name, knit bone, meaning that if you, it's good for even broken bones. Uh, I know that it's difficult normally with broken, broken bones, you have a cast. It's difficult to be able to put a poultice on there, but if possible, you could put it on broken bones. So let's say a broken toe. You can't put a cast on there, so you can definitely put a comfrey poultice on there, and it would help it, help it to heal much faster. So myalgia, which is pain in a muscle or a group of muscles. Do you know where your muscles are? Do you know that you, what does that say, Samantha? I twisted my ankle. You twisted your ankle once. Did you use comfrey? Well, if you did it, you can learn about it. So if you do it again, which hopefully not, or you can share it with somebody, that that's what they can use. Um, so, we used cabbage leaves. Good. That's another really good one. That's a whole nother class, Kitchen Cabinet Remedies. That's another favorite class of mine because that's another way that God showed his love to us to take a cabbage or a potato and make it so powerful that the properties in it can bring incredible healing when we put it on our bodies. So. Our, our, our muscles can get sore, right? They can become painful, especially if we exercise too much or if we stretch and we um, stretch the muscle too much. So examples include exercise. If we sit for too long or we lie down for too long, we're doing a new physical activity for the first time and we, we sprain the ankle or strain it like someone said. Uh, another one is, oh, here's a word. You ready for it? Acute supraspinatus tendinopathy ten, ten. my husband is so much better at these words he teaches these classes so he knows how to say these words <laughs> tendinopathy all right so that is a common source of shoulder pain so if you have shoulder pain in athletes that participate in overhead sports handball volleyball tennis ball baseball another one that you can get pain. What about the violin? My daughter gets shoulder pain from the violin and we put comfrey on it to help her. So that's another way that you can have um, that kind of pain. Topical treatment of pain, inflammation, and swelling of muscles, joints, in the case of degenerative arthritis, acute myalgia or pain in the back, sprains, contusions, which are bruises. How many of you have gotten bruises before? Me. Yeah. Me. Yes. Me. Yes. Us. Us. Yes. I think everybody should be able to say they've gotten a bruise. You can, with either a little comfrey poultice or if you already have comfrey salve made or bought, you can put that right on there. It'll help the bruise so well. I've given it to a friend. She loves it and she, it helps her sun's bruises heal up much faster. So, and also strains, we already talked about, talked about that, after sports, in, sports injuries and accidents. Another word is bone set for comfrey. So it's also good for painful osteoarthritis of the knee. Um, Cabbage is very good for pain in, in the joints too. I've used, someone mentioned cabbage, and I've used that 
on an elderly woman with pain in her knees and the, and the cabbage poultice worked very well. So there is a medicine. It's an, a prescription medicine called diclofenac. Okay, I think I might have said that right. And it reduces swelling or inflammation and pain. It's used to treat aches and pains as well as problems with joints, muscles, and bones. Examples are rheumatoid, so this medication is used for rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis, sprains, strains and muscles and ligaments, back pain, gout, and mus muscular, muscular skeletal rheumatism. And look at this. Comfrey is equal or greater to this medication. And that is from um, the, what is that? I think that's, is that PubMed? No, NCBI. You know what that, hit, that one is, honey? What is? Anyway, it, that's from a, a very rep, reputable source. One of those studies that are done, as you can see there. The okay, the National Institute of Health. So here, now we're going to look into the comfrey poultice and how we can do it. I want to show you really quick. Oh no, that's Molin. I was thinking that was comfrey. Okay, sorry. So here we're going to do the comfrey poultice. So you can wrench your comfrey off and you can dry it. I'm going to take these off because it's difficult to see close up. And so how many of you have done a poultice or had a poultice applied to you? You made one, your mommy or daddy made one? Anybody use a poultice? Yes. Yes? What kind of poultice? Comfrey poultice. You used a comfrey poultice. <laughs> Edward. Anybody else use a poultice? Big level of ground. Get poultices are amazing. I love poultices. They work so well. Onion poultice, cabbage poultice, potato poultice, charcoal poultice, ginger, turmeric poultice. There's all kinds of poultices that you can use. Um, you can use a flaxseed poultice and I don't know, I'm, I know I'm missing some. Clay poultice. It's incredible how many poultices you can do, and they all work so well. Potato huh? poultice. A fake poultice. What did I hear? Potato poultice. A potato. Did you use one? I used a charcoal poultice before. Good. What did you use it for? Uh, I don't remember. I think I was like sick or something. Yeah? Good. Yes, yeah. those are wonderful. And then there's like, I think there's a ginger poultice too. Yes, that's true, a ginger poultice. Look at that, so many. My daughter mentioned a fig poultice. Who in the Bible used a fig poultice? Hezekiah. Good, that's right, see? Poultices have been used for generations and generations, ever since Bible times. Okay, um, so here you can see have a half a dozen Large comfrey leaves cut into two, e two inch pieces, including the stems. I was getting ready to cut them really small, but we can cut them. You can cut them in large pieces and I have a, a, a food processor here and you can place them in there. And then um, only a half cup of water. So I'm just going to do approximately a half cup. That's probably good. No, this is the comfrey. And then you want to puree or pulse on high until, until it's liquid. OK, so I'm going to do that. It's going to have some noise, OK? Is it plugged in? Okay, we're gonna wait and see. Now, while he's trying now. There we go. 
I'm going to try this way. It's kind of... I think I want to put a little more water in there myself. You know, that's what you do when you're cooking. You can adjust it as needed or what you think is best. So making poultices is like cooking. Who likes to cook? Anybody like to Me. cook? Me. Yes. Me. Good job. Me. 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 I'm so glad to hear all those me's. I do. It's it, that cooking is a wonderful art and talent that God has given each one. And it's fun. You know, it's interesting that it said till it's liquid. I would, that's why it's always good to do it for yourself. I would say that you wouldn't necessarily need to get it to liquid. You could do liquid in a Vitamix, that's for sure. But as basically the main thing is that as long as it's um, broken up really well because and you have the juices out and you can see the juices are out of this for sure. So in the food processor, you don't need to do it until it's liquid. We'll do it a little bit more. And I think that's enough. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put some flour in there. You can put flour, cornmeal, or ground flax seed. Any binding agent, meaning something that will hold it together so it's not all liquidy and it'll be like a paste. Okay, so we're going to put that right directly in there. This is flour, but some of you who are gluten-free would want to use cornmeal or flax seed. And I'm just going to go like this and I'm stir it while free. it's in there. What's that? You're I'm gluten free. All right, so you definitely. Me would too. Want. All right. Me so too. Okay. So you, sorry, I chose flour, <laughs> but at least you know you can use cornmeal or flaxseed. I'll forgive you. Oh, thank you. Brotherly love and kindness. That's right. That's a part of medical missionary work too. Okay. You can even take this out and put it in a bowl and stir it better. I was trying to reduce the amount of dishes. But it's getting there. And at least I can take off enough so I can show you the poultice. Okay, how many of you have seen these? Me? Yeah? These are so handy to make poultices. But if you have uh, a cotton thin t-shirt that you can use and cut that you don't need. Is that a, is that a diaper bag? Uh, well, it's not a bag, but it's called um, chucks or an incontinence pad. So it'd be for somebody who needs to have, have it underneath them. It's wow. a little close. Yeah, What's yeah, that? Close. You're breaking up. It's a little close. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, does it look like clothes? It's not clothes. Yeah. Yeah, I can see yeah. why it would look like clothes. But here, I'll show you. Um, so you can see. But the other thing you can use uh, is a thin cotton t-shirt. Any kind of porous material, meaning that the um, properties from the paste that you're going to use can go through the material onto your skin. So you can even use paper towels. So, but I like these because they're so convenient and they're less messy. And so you can see, here's an end. I'll, I can start from an end or a corner and I'll cut. And let's say, yeah, be something for an ankle. I like to can just trim. Can you use a milk bed? What is it again? 
Could you use a milk bag? A milk pad? Bag. A milk bag. Yeah. What's a milk bag? It's like for it's like for when you're making stuff like milk. You put oh, it yes. in cheesecloth. Yeah. 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 Yes, you can. You can use that. Thank you for bringing that up. Did someone else say something? So okay, so no. I just trimmed no. I trimmed this off. And now you can see this part is open, but what I want to do is I I want to open another side. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut right here. So that part is open. It's like a flap. That's why I like the corner pieces and the end pieces because um, this part I don't have to tape. So then, if you can see, there's a lot of dust particles floating in the air coming off from here. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, can you show the remedy again, please? Show the remedy? You mean like, when you say remedy, from the computer? If you can specify what you mean, and then I can do it for you. So, I'm just going to take um, this fluffy. So what are you doing? Can I show the remedy again? Um, can you clarify what you mean? Because I'm in the process of showing the remedy, so do you, what, what exactly do you mean? Sorry. Okay. So, as you can see, I took some of that stuff off. You don't have to get every bit of it off. And we're going to get out. Oh, this it's has nice. It's like mucusy. You know, it has. It's kind of slimy, but it's nice. That's exactly what you want. You want that slimy stuff. And right now, you can see that the, um, the flower has uh, bound it so that it's not liquidy and it's holding in there really nice. And really, I should have brought a spoon, but that's okay. I'm just going to use, I'm trying to spread it out a little bit to make it kind of thinner. But we'll get a little bit more. That's actually a little bit too much. It actually feels nice. I like the way it feels. I'm just going to use my fingers. Then I can do what I want, manipulate it the way I want. Get a little bit more. Wow. So now I can close it up. So I just put it all around like this. Whoops, there we go. And now I can close it up like this. Whoops. Dun da da. And so it's like that. And I like to tape it to keep it in. I like to use bandage tape because it works really easy. But if you wanted to use Masking tape tends to not stick so well. You can use other kind of tape. What happened with this? This is different. Oh boy. This is a almost here. Let's see. What are we doing? I'm not used to this one. I don't know where we got this one from. <laughs> I might have come in one of those bags that you get, you know, someone gives you stuff because they know that you might use it and then, <laughs> but then it's, um, it works differently than what you're used to. I'm used to the bandage tape being able to come off very easily. This is a funny bandage tape. My head, okay. Okay, but that's okay. So we'll keep going and I, my husband is going to work on the tape, and I'm thankful for that. 
And as you can see, okay, so then after that, it can, uh, it can be left on for four to six hours and you can refresh the poultice as needed. So this can be used for like the elbow, you know, any place where you have pain or a bruise, your sprain, the ankle. And uh, then you can, to keep it on, you can use an ACE bandage, if you know what that is, some kind of bandage to wrap it and then you can keep it on. And you can just rest with it there, or you can sleep with it on overnight, and you will see great improvement. And so as we know, it's good for the back pain and arthritis. It's good for broken bones. Oop. And I just did that with the, let me see, let me go back. There we go. Slideshow from current slide. So at any rate, normally I would tape it. And the way that I would tape, I guess maybe he took it out so that he could figure out how to do it. The way that I would tape is I would take off a piece and I would do half, half of the tape here and then the other half I would fold over. And I would do that all the way around like that. And then you have a poultice. Okay. Let's move on. Mullen, someone mentioned mullen, which is good for the respiratory. And this picture I took is on the side of the road. It's the road we travel every time we go to town. And you look to the left and you can see mullen. Isn't it amazing? It's so wonderful how God gave us these things growing and when we find out what they're for, we're amazed at how good they are. Has anybody ever seen mullen in the wild? Besides, I know someone already said they did. Anybody else? Do you recognize seeing this plant? Maybe you didn't realize what it was? Okay, here we go. This is much better bandage tape. You can see that I took this off and now I'm gonna put it halfway on and then I fold it over just like that. And the other one, other side. And put it halfway on and fold it over. And we'll do it again. We've done lots of poultices at home because they work so well. This one, I want to put another piece to close that part up. There you go. There's your poultice. If you were here, I would give it to you. <laughs> Normally, we do that when we're doing Natural Remedies demonstrations. We give it to someone in the audience, and they typically will put it on right then and there. So here we go. Here's the mullen. And I, I, my daughter and I, I stopped with her on the side of the road. And I had to take a picture. And I pulled up two of the mullen plants I pulled because mullen is a biennial. Biennial means that it'll live for two years and it goes through two different stages in those two years. Let me just clear, clean up things really quick. It's always good to clean up. So I'm going to have this towel because it was in water so the roots are wet. I want to show this to you. It's a little droopy because we we picked it yesterday, but you can see, see that plant? These are really fuzzy leaves. The comfrey plant is fuzzy, but it's fuzzy and prickly. These are not prickly. These are just really nice. They feel really nice. It's just such a neat plant. I love that tip. Isn't that a beautiful tip? It's so pretty. Let me see. I'll show you another picture. I thought I had another picture. But you can see how well it looks when it's, um, when it's in the ground and it looks fresh and nice. And then, so this is the first year and the second year it goes to a flower. So here is the other one when it went to the flower and it has a yellow flower which you can't see very well, but it's here. And this is how they multiply because the flower will give off the seeds 
drop down right next to it, you can see how all these plants come from one mother plant that put out many babies. Isn't that wonderful? Just like the gospel seed. We share somebody, share with somebody the truths of God's word, and it's a seed, and then it grows up and bears a plant and then drops seeds in someone else's heart. And so then it, that plant can grow in their heart. So I love how God makes the plants and seeds. Okay, so with mullen, let's learn more about mullen. Because it does well in rocky soil, it may be even found growing as a weed in gravel pits or even next to the side of the road, which is where we found it. It's a biennial plant, which means it lives for two growing seasons. During its first season, it produces a gathering of fuzzy leaves. The second year, the plant produces a tall stalk from the top that grows small yellow flowers. Mullen can be used as a supplement, but it's very commonly consumed as a tea. Brewed from parts of the plant with hot water to extract, extract some of its nutrients and benefits. Mullen is good for asthma, cough, common cold, bronchitis, and COPD. Which, what does it stand for again, honey? Chronic obstructive yeah, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Which is usually someone who's been... Um, smoking, but it, you can also get COPD from other reasons as well. So it makes it very difficult to breathe. But mullen is good for that. Mullen is an expectorant, which means it helps the body expel or get rid of excess or extra mucus, usually by helping make your coughs more productive. How many of you, I know you've had a cold, a chest cold, and you start coughing, right? And you cough a lot? And, you, and there's that mucus in your chest. It's called a productive cough. And sometimes you're coughing and nothing's coming up. And you wish it would come up because then it could help you to stop coughing if it would come up and you could get it out. And then when you spit it out, how many of you are really happy when you're able to spit it out? I am. <laughs> well, mullen helps to get that mucus out so that you can cough less. So it also is a demulsant. Demulsant? How would you say that, honey? Uh, Dem demulsant. A demulsant. Mm -hmm. Studies show that demulsants create a soothing anti-inflammatory coating over mucous membranes. I know this is kind of some big words, so let me try to, I'll break this down in a little bit. Demulsants contain a higher amount of mucilage than other plants. Now, we can see that the comfrey is very um, mucilaginous. So it also puts out a demulsant. So that's this, um, this kind of mucusy stuff. But it actually can, um, this is good mucusy stuff because it's soothing and it's anti-inflammatory. So that's also what mullen does. Um, all plants produce at least a little of this sticky substance. It's sticky. You can see it's sticky. It was sticky on my fingers, which provides soothing relief to the mucous membranes, which are here in the chest. So a demulsant is a substance relieving inflammation or irritation. And um, it also relieves minor pain and inflammation of the membrane. Examples of demulsants are pectin, glycerin, honey, and syrup. And they're common ingredients in cough mixtures and cough drops. So we're going to skip some things for, as this, for the sake of time. So mullen, because of being an expectorant and a demulsant, is very soothing for the lungs, throat, and the bronchial patches, passages that can lead to difficulty breathing and it has strong antiviral effects so it's very good for the flu. Um, it can also treat middle ear infection, infections in children so it would consist of eardrops with mullen, St. John's wort and garlic and oil or glycerin. Alright to make the mullen tea 
Of course, you can buy the prepared mullein bags, or you can, pair, you can pour one cup of water over one to two teaspoons of dried mullein leaves or flowers, and you steep it for 10 to 15 minutes before drinking, and you can drink it three to four times a day. Now, to harvest the leaves, so here, you, here are your mullein leaves, and you can take that off. Here it is, right here. Ooh, soft. I wish you could, oh, it's kind of prickly on my skin. Actually, it feels like maybe when, if your daddy has a mustache or a beard and he kisses you on the cheek. <laughs> okay, so um, you don't want to wash the leaves off with water as they, may, as they may mold instead of drying. You want to just carefully brush off any dirt. So what you can do is you can make small bunches and hang them upside down in a warm, dry place out of direct sunlight. So here's an example of hanging herbs to dry the herbs. You can see right here. And you can also spread your herbs out on a clean screen or paper towels laid over a wire rack in a cool, dry spot. Uh, you can dry them in your oven at 180 degrees for one to two hours more if needed. You want to crack the oven door for airflow. And drying on a screen gives good airflow. It can be faster than drying in bunches. It can take up to a week or more depending on the humidity in the air. Okay, so we're going to... The fresh herbs, you can use three teaspoons or, which is one tablespoon of fresh herb, for every cup of tea, or just one teaspoon of dried herbs, since drying concentrates the herbs' flavors. And that's 20 minutes of steeping. Okay, let's get into pine needles. We got to move on so we can try to cover. Pine needles, these are, this is the last thing. But there's also something very special that I want to show you after we look at the pine needles, which is just an incredible display of God's love. And I'm looking forward. This is going to be my favorite part of the presentation. It's showing you these inc amazing pictures from my friend. Okay, so here are pine needles. Do you see? Can you tell the difference between this, these pine needles and these pine needles? What do you think, mm -hmm. what do you think is different about them? Can you tell? It's What's diff different? Different type of pine tree. Yes. Can you see it? Can you tell me a difference? One half one longer tree heaves. Yes. Good. So this one, these have longer pine needles and is in one bunch like this. And these have shorter and they're coming out like that. And these were the only two kinds of pine trees that I could find quickly. And then there's this one. Does anybody know what this is? It looks like another pine tree. It does. It's called a spruce. And it's also an evergreen. What does evergreen mean? Is, is it goes, that means it's green. Uh, green uh, all That's right. Good job. So pine needles... These are an another one of my favorites where it reminds us of God's love because of how incredible they are. Wonderful. I'm so glad that you used to live next to a pine tree. So pine needles are rich in vitamin C. They're five times the concentration of vitamin C found in lemons. And they can bring rel relief to condi conditions such as heart disease, varicose veins, skin complaints, and fatigue. So vitamin, the, but the main thing is that it boosts the immune system. So there are also high levels of vitamin A, which is similar to lamb's quarters, vitamin C and vitamin A. Good for your eyes, improve your hair and skin, and also your red blood cell production. We want lots of red blood cells. Okay, this one is another one like mullein, which it can help with your coughs to um, help to get the mucus out and to relieve chest congestion. Also good for sore throats. And there's other things on here you see it's good for? Antioxidants. 
we definitely want antioxidants in our bodies because these eat up the free radicals and free radicals can lead to cancer. So we definitely want this, um, these kinds of things. So pine needles, very interestingly, they have all these wonderful effects. Antioxidant, anti-mutagenic, anti-proliferative on cancer cells, meaning it'll help cancer cells not to multiply. We don't want cancer cells to multiply. We want the good cells to come in to kill the cancer cells, right? So praise the Lord for that. And you can see down there where I got that from. So also when you um, pine needles steeped in hot water, it releases something called schistemic acid. And this is very good for the flu. And there's a drug that is over the counter called Tamiflu and one of the main ingredients is schistemic acid. Um, let's see. And you want to make sure that you're getting the right pine tree because not all are safe to consume. So one thing that is easy to identify is usually you want to get the ones that have two to five fascicles, which meaning two to five pine needles on one bunch. And I found the two and three. So um, the eastern white pine has five need a cluster of five, five needles. The red pine has two. Okay, let's see. Let's take it off and let's see how many we have. And you, and you want to even take off more than one because sometimes a needle has fallen off. Okay, here we go. I'm going to take one off. How many pine needles? Here we go. One, two. And that is the red pine. The yellow pine has three. What about this one? So we're going to take a cluster off. And the cluster is right here. And we're going to count one, two, three. So that is the yellow pine. So the, the cluster is held together by a brown papery covering where it meets the branch. And that's what I was showing you. And you can see the difference. And I showed you here between the spruce, different um, spruces in the pine needle. Okay, so the homework is for you to look up pine sap and what is it good for. All right, so I want you to tell me that next time. Now, I'm going to have, while this is boiling, I'm going to just make this pine needle tea while we're going over this next presentation. So basically, um, you could do, I don't know, I could do like about half of this pot and you can just take off these pine needles. I don't even worry about taking off the brown papery covering. I just put them right directly in here. This is making pine needle tea. It's really easy and we can do a mixture of the the uh, yellow pine and the red pine, the two leaves and the three leaves. We just put them in there. Pine, has anybody had pine needle tea? It's so tasty. I really, I, it really is. It's very tasty. I like it. You can make it as strong as you want. You can make it as mild as you want. And I really like it with lemon and honey. And you can make it ahead of time and keep it in the refrigerator. And it can just be a regular tea that you can drink. So you can drink it even when you're not sick. You can just drink it just to get all of its properties. And it can count like as your water quota. So let's say you need to drink six cups of water a day. Well, if you drink some pine needle tea, that can count toward the amount of water that you would need. need. You can even put lemon juice and stevia if you want, if you didn't want to put honey. We do that. We make lemonade um, by make, putting uh, lemon juice and stevia because I tend to like to have the honey, something with honey closer to the meal time or, um, you know, 
30 minutes or so before the meal time. But in the evening, definitely you can have some tea with honey. But you know, that's just whatever you all think is best. That's just my rule of thumb. So I'm putting it in there. And I have just a handful. It's going to go. And I'm going to turn this on. And it's going to be going. But we're not going to watch it. Because a watch pot doesn't boil, right? No, just <laughs> that's just a funny saying. It'll boil, but might as well do something while it's boiling. Yeah? So, so I think I got a good amount in there. I take it off. Basically, I'm just taking it off the stem. Okay, and I'm going to put the lid over it because it'll boil faster <coughs> with the lid on. And let's look into the next um, segment about God's love. Are we ready? Oh, I wanted to share this with you. Can someone read this for me? Go ahead and read it. Kind, cheerful, encouraging words will prove more effective than the most healing medicines. <gasps> Isn't that amazing? So the, what can be more effective than most healing medicines are kind, cheerful, encouraging words. Do you know that God wants to constantly encourage us? Everything in nature he puts out there to encourage us. And he gives us kind, cheerful words in his Bible and also in other books that we read. What about you? Do you give kind, cheerful, encouraging words to your parents or to your brothers and sisters? or to your friends, or your grandparents, or your teachers, or your neighbor, or a stranger? Can you imagine that it can actually bring healing to them? So I just wanted you to remember that. That's one of my favorite sayings. I love it. Because we can do that all throughout the day. That can be your ministry. So let's look. So did you know God is always seeking for ways to encourage you and make you happy, to make you smile? Now we're going to look at pictures from a book called The Heart to Heaven. And my friend in Germany wrote this book, and it's the testimony of how she gave her heart to Jesus. I highly recommend reading it. Um, this is the website where you can get the book. It's, you can see this is German, and she's going to have the English version available soon. So you'll have to keep checking back um, to be able to read the English version. It's not a long book, and it's really, really good. I highly recommend reading it. So, oh, this is where I'm going to have my husband come and change over to the heart pictures. Has anybody ever found the shape of hearts in nature? Have you seen the shape of hearts in nature? Yes. Yeah? And what? What was the object that you saw? In a leaf. A leaf! That's right! Did you realize that was God's way of telling you He loves you? Anybody else? Have you seen any hearts in nature? Let me see. A potato. I gotta put, let me see. I think is someone, oh, I see it! Is that a rock? Good! I love it! What's that? Yeah, it is a rock. Did you find that on a nature walk? We were at a lake. You were at a lake? That is so awesome! I'm so happy you found that. I encourage other children to look for hearts in nature. My friend, who did not know anything about Jesus growing up, and she went through a lot of pain as a child because she didn't know Jesus. When God was able to lead her to Him, she started discovering hearts everywhere. And she was convinced that there is a God in heaven and He is love and that He loves her. And so now she is a beautiful Christian and we're going to look at all the hearts that she and her family have found 
so that maybe you can start looking for hearts in nature and start collecting them and sharing it with others so others can remember that God loves them. Huh? Okay. So can you see this heart in the sky? It's a heart. Do you see it? Okay. When my friend, after she went to her first Bible study, and she wasn't sure about what she was studying, and she wasn't sure about God, she looked up in the sky at night, and this is what she saw. The exact repl replica of this image. Can anybody tell me what is in the middle of that heart? It's a constellation in the sky. Stars. Yeah, which ones? It starts the, constel the constellation Orion. That's right. Very good. She looked up in the sky, and there were clouds. And in the middle of the cloud, there was this heart shape opening. And in the midst of the heart was the constellation Orion. She was convinced that there is a God in heaven. He is a God of love, and He loves her. And He is call. He was calling her, and she gave her heart to Him, and she now loves to live for him and tell others about his love. That's why she wrote this book and shared all these amazing pictures. So here we go. What do you think this is? This is going to be a fish. guessing. Huh? Fish? Fish. I can see why it would look like fish. Well, I'll tell you. While peeling a banana, a strip fell to the ground. This strip rolled up in slow motion to a heart. This is my friend saying this. I could literally watch it. Totally amazed, I admired this transformation. Isn't that neat? So, she was finding hearts everywhere and she still does it. What about this? What do you think this is? I think it's a shell. A shell, yes. While on vacation, she found this heart shell on the beach. What about this one? A heart drawing? It looks like a, a yeah, heart a drawing. Yes, it looks like a heart drawing, and I, I can see why you would think that because there's a pin right next to it. But someone said, I like a rock, and that's close. Her husband, Ralph, discovered this heart made of the Uma sl slate. So it's a type of slate. Does anybody know what slate rock is? Have you studied that at all? Huh? No. Slate? You can look that up with your mommy and daddy, what slate is. She found this, her husband found it while gardening. What was that? Give me, give that to us, Nene. Give that to Nene, please. Okay. What about that? Do you, can you, do you recognize a heart somewhere? That's a heart in the sky. That's right. When she looked up while she was gardening, she saw, and actually she said it was more distinct, it was even more shaped, but by the time she got her camera, it was already starting to go away. What about here? Do you recognize the heart? Do you recognize? Can you see the hearts and the flowers? Petals? Yes. What about here? Can you guess what this is? This one's funny. Mango. It looks like a mango. It's and a peel. Corn. It's cornflakes. They were eating breakfast and they just noticed this cornflake shaped like a heart. So she documents every heart that she notices. What about this? This is something a little bit difficult. That's a, I think it looks like wood. It does. It's a, it's a, the peel of citrus. It's the peel of mandarin. Her husband, Ralph, was peeling a mandarin at work, and he saw this peel heart. So she's gotten her husband to look for hearts, too. That's a good thing to get our husbands to look for hearts. All right, here is, it's a type of fruit. I'm not sure exactly what that is. She didn't write it. It'd be interesting. No, soft. What's that? Sour soft. It looks like sour soft. Is that right? Well, there we go. Sour soft heart. Yeah. Okay, look, can anybody see the little heart there? Yeah, we see it. You see it? Yes. Yes. 
That is. It looks um, like he's on a fruit. It's a piece of fruit. It looks like a plum. She didn't make that. It was there, and she picked it up, and she saw it. What do I hear? Do you see any hearts? Blue, a heart on a blueberry. Yes, she did not make that. This is, she just, when she sees a heart, she says, wow, that's God's love. So she says, fruits are not only delicious and healthy, we are, we are also able to see that there's a lot of love in them. What do I hear? Can you guess what? That looks like a tiny apple. It is. It is, is shaped like a, it is shaped like a heart. What do I hear? Do you see the heart in this one? Yes. 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 It's, it's in the middle. That's right. Isn't that amazing how God does that? It's impressive where hearts can appear. They can appear everywhere. <gasps> Look at those. Aren't those cute? What do you think? They, what kind of those fruit? Those are petals. Wait, What's that? No, those are not. Uh, it looks like a plum. That's right. Plum. Plums. Heart plums. God made those for us. Look, an up-close picture of a heart plum. What do I hear? Even That's an apple. That's an apple. Do you see the heart? Yes. yes. What, yeah. what is that on the apple besides it being a heart? That's something defective. It shouldn't be there. A bad it's, spot. Yeah. God even can it take... A mold? Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's, well, you, we would consider it a bruise on the apple. So that can remind us of the verse, all things work together for good. If God can even make heart, hearts out of the bruises on the apples. What about here? Do you see the hearts? Not yes. just in the strawberry. shape. Do you see it directly in the strawberry? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? I think that is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Here's another close-up picture of that strawberry. Look at, strawberry. look at that heart inside of there. Isn't that amazing? God wanted to make sure we are convinced of His love. What about here? Do you see the it's heart? In, it's really tiny. Yes, it's in the orange. Yes, it's right where in the orange. It's actually in the orange. It's a persimmon. It's a persimmon. It's right in the very middle of that star. What? Oh, now here's. This is. What do you think this is? I know it. An yes. orange. Can you imagine? They orange cut, peel. Yes, they cut that peel and look at that little heart in there, the little blob. What about here? Oh. That's a kiwi. That's Next kiwi. time you open kiwis, you can look for hearts, right? And we just looked at that. That's a tomato. A tomato. Tomato. God tomato. Made, and he made tomatoes good for, for the heart. Oh, this one isn't. Can you watermelon. find the heart in That's this? That's watermelon. That's a watermelon. In the Do you heart see the like heart? You have to turn watermelon. this way. Do you see it? Yes. yes. Honey, where's that thing that you did where I can do the shape? Yeah, you can see the name. Oh, can you see that? Here it is, right here. Yes, we can see it. Can you see the outline? Isn't that neat? Wow. I mean, my, my friend has trained her eye, and we can train our eyes too. To see the hearts. What am I here? What is this? That's a pineapple. That's a, yes. That's a pineapple. Do you, do you see the heart? Yes. Yes. Right there, right? Isn't that lovely? What am I here? This is very interesting. Okay. The, wait, that looks like coffee. It's not coffee. <laughs> it's actually uh, like... Um, it's better. It's like a jam, like a jelly. It says that when we open a jar of apple mango for breakfast, we could see a heart of fruit pulp under the lid. They didn't do that. It came like that. So, and look, and then, do you see the heart here? Yes. Yes. Another lid. She says sometime later, they opened another apple mango jar for breakfast. They must really like it. I wish they had that here in, in, in America, huh? She said to her daughter, remember when we saw this heart under the lid during the, during the Bible camp? This is usually not possible at all to see a heart shape. Well, then the daughter says, Mommy, look! She opened, because she opened the lid to show that it, there was no heart shape. It was just, you know, the mango, apple mango butter. 
But then the daughter said, look, I see a little heart, a little blob that looks like a heart. And there it is in the corner of the lid. lid. What about here? Can you see the heart? Yes. What is it? A raspberry. It's in yes. the center of the raspberry. That's right, right there. She said probably a bird pecked it there. And there's another, just a picture by itself. What about here? Do you see the heart? Yes. That's, yes. That's a carob drink. While stirring the carob powder, a carob heart remained on the surface. She has fun in life. We can have fun in life with these simple things. What am I here? Do you see hearts? Yes. Yes. What are they? Walnuts. That's right. Walnuts. Hearts in the, look at those hearts in the walnuts. <gasps> what am I here? Onion. That's an onion. Do you see the heart? Yes. Right there. Oh, what am I here? What is this? Beef. A... Not a beef? No, I, th I think is... it's a tool. I think it's a. Oh. You don't. You don't eat it often. Radish. 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 Do you see the heart? No. Yes. It's right no. there. You see that right there, in the middle. Yes. Yeah. There's the heart. What about here? <laughs> She's finding Potato. heart. Potato. Potato. It's actually, it's actually a loaf of bread. Bread. Yes. And there's it right there. Look at this. Okay. She says. My husband had hydraulic, I'm going to turn this off and let it steep. My husband had hydraulic oil dripping on his pants while he was working. The result was a heart spot. Now here, do you see the heart? Yes. Yeah, it's a heart. Uh-huh. At the beginning of the Sabbath, we were able to have this fascinating heart experience. On our daughter's head, we saw a strand of hair was laid into a heart as if by an angel's hand. And then there, do you see the hearts on the wall? Yes. Her husband was in the process of redecorating their front room for mission books. In order to clean the walls, he sprayed water on them and the spray bottle, spray bottle produced water hearts. And then, do you see the heart there? Ah. Yeah. That's in the bucket of soapy water. <laughs> so even while we're cleaning, we can be looking for God's love, we can be thinking about God's love, and it can make our cleaning so much more enjoyable when all we're doing is just thinking about His love. Look at there, there's a water droplet from the bucket of water dropped on the floor and formed a heart. And then, do you see the heart there? Yes. Yes. Right there. She said, this is in the bathroom. A heart butterfly in the bath lamp. What about here? Do you see the heart? Yes. Oops. She said that it was um, the toothpaste. This was formed by the toothpaste on the inside of their toothbrush glass. Now, you couldn't do that on your own. But God does these kind of things so we can see his love everywhere and during our walks we were allowed to see these hearts among other things here's a heart cloud a heart leaf someone said they found a heart leaf on the beach do you see the heart in this yes you can see it where is it uh, and on the green part that's right. There it is, right there. There's the heart. What, and here we are. This is, um, this is different hearts made of stone. Look at these stones. Someone, someone showed a similar stone. Look at those beautiful stones made of hearts. That's a big one made of heart, shaped into a heart. Look at the grass, shaped into a heart. <gasps> this is a tree trunk. Do you see the heart? Yes. And here is inside of a piece of bark. They're, they find hearts everywhere. On your nature walks, you can just be looking for hearts. That's just a part of, uh, maybe, I think that must be up close, the piece of bark. 
What kind of tree is this? Can anybody recognize it? Yes, papaya. Who? Papaya. papaya. That's right. Have you ever seen the hearts on the papaya tree trunk? Have you ever noticed it? No. No? Now you can look for it. Okay. Here is, oh, do you see the heart here? Isn't that a pretty flower? Yes. I love that. That is so beautiful. Look at this. Do you see the heart here? Yes. That is, can anybody recognize what kind of green that is? It's a dark green leafy vegetable uh, that we eat. A clue is the color right up here. Do you see that color? Beet greens? Close. Swiss chard? Yes, Swiss chard. Good. There's a heart right there in the Swiss chard. These are shamrock leaves. See those beautiful hearts? And yes. here's another heart leaf. Do you, can you I recognize saw that? that? What's that? I saw the leaf that looks like a heart in my house. You saw that? Now you can yeah. look at it in a different light. You can look at it as a heart-shaped leaf to remind you that God loves you. Do you see the heart in this flower? Yes. No. Right here. Right here on the top. There's the heart. Oh. Isn't that nice? What do I hear? Do you see the hearts in, 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 in these flowers? In this flower? Yeah. Yes, right here, the heart petals. What about the hearts here? So God reveals it's on his, the, huh? It's on the petal. That's right. God reveals all his love for us, not only in his word, he has also put it into his creation. If we devote more time to nature, how many small hidden treasure, treasures we can discover there. Just the sight of flowers make us marvel and touches our heart. Is it a coincidence? No, I think it's impossible. Creation is Far too well thought out for that and designed with such great love and perfection. Each flower is a work of art in itself. You see those heart flowers? Those are beautiful. They're actually called, let me see. I know there's a name for them. Look at those beautiful flowers. Heart flowers. Even white ones. Has anybody seen these before? These yeah. kinds of no, I've seen them growing in someone's yard. I wouldn't mind yeah. having these. Yeah? I wouldn't mind having them in my yard. Look at these. I think this one is the... Is that the Hoya wax flower? Uh, maybe not. Maybe that was the one earlier. I'm not sure exactly what this one is. Heart leaves. Look at that. What does... It doesn't look like a heart, but what does this look like, this flower? Can you tell? A bird. Yes, you see the eye and then there's the beak. Good. These are orchids. You can make orchids even look like birds. And these are the wings. He's amazing. There's another one. That looks like there's like the eyes and the beak. Isn't that marvelous? And the wings. Here's an up close picture. Here's another one. Can anybody see the heart in this flower? I'm seeing a heart. Yes. Where is it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? In the middle. Right here? Yeah. R right there. It also looks like a bird, too. And there are the hearts magnifying, magnified, the little heart leaves. And then she made a heart right there. So, in every bush each bud and every flower reveals itself an expression of the love of god to us humans god gave and continues to give us such special 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 messages in our daily lives as very personal encouragement he wants to tell us i love you hang in there you are important to me to perceive them brings us a great blessing these are the words of my friend isn't that lovely i love that this is all part of healing when we see these kinds of things or when we show people who are struggling these kinds of things, we bring their attention, 
This can help heal our minds, which then can help heal our bodies. So praise the Lord. Yay, you all lasted. That was a much longer class than I expected. Oh, and let's look at our tea. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Let's look at our tea. I brought this. Oh, I like the smell. It smells like pine needle. Now, it's going to be clear, but it's going to have like this kind of, um, like a film. So you can see that it doesn't really change the color too much. Oh, I love the smell of it. So that was, you steep it for like 20 minutes and the leaves will lose their color, the, the needles I mean. If I can get the needle out so to show you without burning myself. Maybe I can put a needle inside here. Here. So here's the needles. You can see that they've lost their color. But, so then you can put some lemon. I probably won't drink it because it's really hot. But I'll just show you how you can put the lemon in there. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Then you can put some honey. And stir it up. I didn't bring a spoon. We won't use the comfrey spatula because I don't want to taste that. And this is a lovely drink. Gives you lots of vitamin C and vitamin A and boost your immune system. So you can drink it when you're sick or even when you're not sick. Yeah? I don't know. I wish you could smell it. I hope you make some. I won't taste it. I don't want to burn myself. <laughs> All right. Now, it's the end of the show and some of you came on later. Can anyone tell me where you are from? What state or country, if you haven't told me yet, because I like to know. It's really just fun, if you Florida. don't mind. Florida. Brazil. Brazil, yay! Anybody else? I am from Ohio. Ohio. I have family there. Anyone else? Idaho. Idaho, I've never been there. Maybe one day. We have our adopted Vovo that lives with us at home. She is from Brazil. Her name is Olga. She's our adopted mom and my daughter's adopted grandmother and we love her dearly. So we have a special heart connection to Brazil. Anybody else? All right. Okay, let's end with prayer. Let's, let's sing a song. Does anybody know any scripture songs? We will sing one song that you would like to sing. I have to see. Colorado, but we're from Brazil. Praise the Lord. James 4, 6 is a scripture verse. Yes, what is it? James 4, 6. Can you look it up or tell me what it is? It's the scripture song. Yes, I know, but I, I'm not sure what verse that is. Does any, my Do you want me to sing it? Yes, that would be lovely. Can you sing it? Okay. Oh, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. James 4, 6, James 4, 6, James 4, 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. James 4, 6. James 4, 6, James 4, 6. Wow, that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. That was lovely. Oh, Samantha, can you really quick type the, my email, the children's email address on there? I forgot to have, huh? It's, um, the email address is childrenshealthzoom7d at gmail.com. So Samantha is going to type that. Would someone like to pray to close 
with prayer. I love to hear you pray, and I know Jesus loves to hear you pray. Children's with the apostrophe? No, no apostrophe. Children's Health Zoom. I'll yes. pray. Wonderful. And the number 7 and the letter D at gmail.com. Thank you so much. You can go ahead and pray, please. I Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you that everybody was able to join. Thank you that you give us natural remedies that help us when we're sick. Please bless us the rest of this day. Everybody in class, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And remember to look for God's love everywhere and the foods we eat and the wild herbs when we go on our walks and looking for hearts. And go home and try some pine needle tea. It's really good. Come, Samantha. Come say bye. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Be always kind and true. I like that little song. Bye, everybody. We'll see you Bye. next week. By God's grace, we'll be praying for you that you have a good week.